saying that it was too much work and that she couldn't come back. Don't you remember, Martha? I know I get confused sometimes, but this is different. I know. That's why I've been so very worried about you. You've been wonderful, Lyle. I don't know why you put up with a silly old woman. Why is it wrong? She's got that box hidden away somewhere. What good's it doing her? I know, Lyle, but she's a helpless old woman. I do wish you'd give up the idea. Maybe Kothar might know where it is. I'm sure he doesn't. Are you positive he doesn't? Yes. Well, she's got it hidden away in that house somewhere. I may have to strangle her, but I'll get it. Oh. <laughs> Who's Max Weisenweber? He's one of the most important art collectors in Europe. He's written the museum a couple of times. Cother seems to think he's a bit shady. Oh? Why do you ask? And if it is a genuine Cheney vase, I may be induced to go as high as 45,000 payable in dollars or marks at Frankfurt. Think of what we could do with all that money. We'd go to Europe, we'd have cars, clothes. Where's the book with the picture of the vase in it? Yeah. The Cheney vase is comparatively small, being eight inches high, made of porous sodafine. It bears a simple crimson design on a lustrous natural background. It was discovered by the archaeologist William Cheney in 1881. What now? I think you might start learning German and arrange about your passport. I think we ought to deliver it to that uh, very nice Mr. Reisenweber in person. here for such a time, maybe a cup of tea would taste good. Nobody told me. I just figured. Well, now that's very... That's very kind. Put it on the table. I... I... I don't remember your name, my dear. Ruby Boynton. Ruby. Where is Mr. Endicott? Oh, I don't know. Downstairs somewhere, I guess. I want you to help me. I've got to get out of here and he won't let me. He won't let me see anyone. He's done something to the telephone and I can't call anyone. You've got to help me. Now, this is to my attorney. I want you to take it and make sure that he gets it. Will you please? Please. <laughs> oh, allow me, dear. Why didn't you ring? Well, I don't think I can get what I want in this house anymore. <laughs> you know that everything I do here is for you. I feel like almost one of the family. Lyle, hmm? this arrangement of ours, it hasn't worked out. I want you to go. Well, Martha, I'd feel guilty if I left you now. Well, you know you're not yourself. You're not responsible. Well, I know I haven't been myself recently. But I'm beginning to see everything very clearly now. Well, how can you say that, Martha, when you have such delusions? 
when you can write such fantastic letters like this. Martha. Really. some bad news. I think our little scheme's down the drain. The man from a bank is just here, and it seems like the Cheney vase is in the safe deposit box down there. Well, good evening, darling. How about a drink? I've had a bad day. Why can't just once, just once, something work out right for us? Uh, and now she says she needs a rest, and she wants to go off somewhere with me for a month. Where are you going? Well, his sister's got a place up in Maine. I don't know, we'll be stuck up there in the North Woods with no telephone, or uh, I won't even be able to... Stop it, Lyle. I'm sick to death of your lying and sick of whatever you're doing to that poor woman. What are you talking about? When you made application for your passport, you gave the museum as your business address. I did a little checking, and suddenly everything began to fall into place. The way you've been avoiding me. That cock and bull story about the vase being in a bank somewhere. And now you're going off to Maine. All right, I'll level with you. You're right, I do consider you and your morality excess baggage. But since I'm off to Frankfurt tonight at 8.30... What? Oh, yeah. It's been delightful, Pamela, every minute of it. I just have time to go over and pick up the little vase from Miss Cheney's and be off. And I wouldn't go to the police if I were you. That letter of recommendation you wrote implicates you just as much as me. Hello? Yes, Mr. Coulter. I'm at the station. I hate to bother you, but I'm a mountain of work. I wonder that you'll come around to the museum tomorrow, even though it is Saturday. Yes. Yes, I think so. Fine. I'll tell you about the trip tomorrow. Mr. Coulter, go to Mrs. Cheney's at once. It's important. He'll be there by six. You haven't got time. It's almost five now. It'll take him an hour to get there from the station. I'll still have time. <laughs> Try to make me tell you which one it is. I'm a poor, deluded old woman, probably mad, you know. I wouldn't be able to tell one from the other. You know, they're really rather good, those copies. I'd probably be able to sell them for a great deal of money. And so, another American primitive was born. Thinking our audience might be interested in obtaining a memento of tonight's story, we asked uh, Grandma Cheney to whip up a few thousand more vases. And we're prepared to make an amazing offer on a strictly first-come, first-served basis. Listen closely. This will not be repeated. If you wish one of these lovely vases, just send us your name and address, together with $45,000 in cash. Please do not send stamps or coins. My, they did go fast, didn't they? Next.